On the RTX 3080 Review Day video, I said that I was underwhelmed. And well, if we look at the definition, we would see that that literally means fail to impress or make a positive impact. You know, when I read that and I see positive impact, I think of that as above average. Positive, not neutral, not negative. The words that are synonyms, I would say, is maybe disappointed or let down. But to be clear, that's not because Ampere was a weak graphics card. No, it was quite a bit faster than the previous generation for being a cut down die. The problem was that NVIDIA promised us a certain level of performance and they just did not deliver that level of performance. And so to the people that said that they were so sure I would say positive things about AMD, well, that's up to AMD. No, I would say positive things about the RX 6800 XT if it actually delivered the performance AMD promised. AMD promised that at least the 6900 XT would deliver double the performance of the 5700 XT. That's what they promised. That's us. Us consumers should expect them to deliver what they said they would and, and hopefully without a bunch of compromises. Again, you see, the problem with Ampere was it delivered a decent generational uplift, but it wasn't double. And it came with excessive power usage and pretty major compromises on VRAM capacity for the majority of the lineup, at least so far. So, well, I mean, it is the 6800 XT review day. Am I underwhelmed? Well, honestly, if you consider what my expectations were a couple months ago, no, nothing I'm seeing today surprises me at all. The 6800 XT, depending on the resolution, is roughly a 3080, as expected. And as I said in a recent video, it is not as good at ray tracing. Very much so worse tanking, as I literally was told in a couple of games. Although, I will say this, it's not every game that is a complete disaster in ray tracing relative to NVIDIA, and it doesn't surprise me at all that sponsored games like Minecraft run so much better. Furthermore, when you look at what's happening on the consoles with Devil May Cry and Spider-Man, I know they have their own customizations to ray tracing and other features, but I gotta say that... I think mid to long term, so near the end of 2021, you could see RDNA2's ray tracing performing better than you might expect based on these early games. Nonetheless, there's no way around it. It's probably never going to be as good at running high levels of ray tracing as Ampere. And, well, I guess the only true thing that I am a little disappointed by is still no updates to when this, you know, super sampling competitor to DLSS comes out. Again, as I said in a recent video, I have absolutely no timeline for this. And so, well, DLSS is really only good in a handful of games. I wouldn't consider it the biggest feature yet. It is something AMD should have had a more concrete answer to. That's really the only thing that disappoints me a little bit. Although, again, they didn't promise you this would be there at launch. That is why I am not underwhelmed by AMD and I was by Ampere. And... The fact of the matter is, considering it's more efficient, considering it's more reasonably priced, and considering it has VRAM capacities that I think will last longer next to 16 gigabyte consoles that will be the standard for developers for the next five years, I think RDNA 2, I think the 6800 XT specifically is a better choice than the RTX 3080. And despite not winning in ultimate performance. And again, make no mistake, the RTX 3090 can run higher levels of ray tracing while hitting the same frame rates at ultra high resolutions than Big Navi can. The 3090 will win in 8K gaming versus Big Navi. But who games at 8K? And are those frame rates good enough, even if they are higher on NVIDIA? And with super high levels of ray tracing, even if NVIDIA is better at that, are you getting frame rates that are good enough? And the answer is no. And this is something I tried to explain and people pan me for that you cannot technically have the strongest card and yet still have a better product. And that is what AMD has delivered here. AMD has outflanked Nvidia. They didn't take the performance crown, but they delivered a better lineup. I mean, what's better? Running the better tech demos at 30 frames per second or having a balanced card that delivers the performance 
in realistic scenarios for a more reasonable price and a more reasonable package. That's what I would recommend at the end of the day. And you know what? I think it's going to be, well, at the end of the day, I don't know that it will be easier to get RDNA2 this holiday season with how much demand there is. But I do think I need to talk about availability again, unfortunately, just a little bit. But first, an ad from a sponsor. Well, it's the holiday season, and you know what that means. Lots of travel for this holiday season, and hopefully for a more open 2021. I bought a studio laptop for mobile editing. And of course, well, it didn't come with an open license of Microsoft Office. And those can be very expensive, especially for the professional version. But luckily, I was able to get Microsoft Office Professional for a reasonable price from cdkoffers.com. Go to cdkoffers.com and use the promotional code Broken Silicon to get 25% off an already cheap list price of Windows 10 Professional. Then all you do is click on your email account, go to user center and then my purchase orders to get the code just use this code with a normal download of windows 10 professional from microsoft's website all right links in the description so this is probably the last time i'm going to talk about availability because i am unfortunately coming to the conclusion that too many people seem to have a complete incapability of understanding how these launches work like like i don't know how long some people have been around but since I mean, I mean, literally, since I can remember, you know, all the way going back before the RX 400 series, every graphics card that comes out sells out immediately. It just is a matter of does it sell out in about five minutes, ten minutes, or is there literally nothing like what there was with Ampere? And that's really the key distinction with RDNA 2 is that, you know, when I looked in my disc, the Moore's Law is Dead Discord, when I talked to some friends, a few of them got big Navi graphics cards, both in Europe and the U.S., not everyone, maybe not you, but some people did. And when it came to Ampere, it was no one. And, and keep in mind that when you're in the circles of people I talk to, these are people that aren't novices in getting electronics at launch. These are people that usually get something at launch if they want to, you know? And the fact of the matter is this. One of the key distinguishing differences between what a true paper launch is and a non-paper launch is does stock keep coming in? And it's going to with RDNA too. This is something Hardware Unboxed has covered. This is something I've said a dozen times. You know, if you really want to quote me, what I've said is by the end of Q4, AMD will deliver more big knob cards than 3080 and 3090s combined in a bit less than there are 3070s by the end of Q4. So that's less than two months. AMD is going to ship more enthusiast grade products than NVIDIA has for about four months. That is substantially higher volume. They've even increased production by about 20% uh, for these cards for this quarter to try to take up some of this market share. But the fact is, NVIDIA is shipping less than should be expected of them in a Q4 launch, like probably about half to a third as many. And they usually take up most of the market. So look guys, AMD is not going to satisfy demand. And as I've said, it's gonna be hard to get, I mean, I don't know how many times I've said, it, it's gonna be very hard to get RDNA 2 until I don't know. Honestly, I think all consumer electronic devices are going to be hard to get until quarter two next year. That's always what I've said. Um, the one thing that I think a lot of people don't seem to understand is this, though. Uh, most of the day one sales were AMD's reference solution, you know, and most of Big Navi's stock is going to AIB models. So as this comes in, in about a week, that's where you're going to see much greater availability of RDNA too. You know, they launched the reference models now, and they're actually going to keep selling them, unlike NVIDIA. But keep checking Newegg next week. Most of the stock, I believe it was like two-thirds of the Big Navi boards went to AIB non-reference models, you know. So that's the difference between this and Ampere. And, you know, unfortunately, <laughs> I was going to do some kind of street price comparison, but it's pretty much all reference models and there's not enough data in. But I think the true distinguishing difference, too, between what happens with AMD's uh, street price and stock is, are the non-reference models selling for closer to $800, like the 3080 is, or are they selling closer to around, you know, 680 or $700? You know, that's going to be the big... Um, 
comparison point, I think, for how honest AMD was with the price compared to NVIDIA. And I was hoping to do that in this video, but I can't. So yeah, that's really all I have to say about availability. You know, number one, just because you didn't get it doesn't mean it's a paper launch. And number two, really a paper launch is something that there's a few, if any, right away, and then none. That's not what's going to happen with RDNA 2. It's going to keep flowing in. And number three, it's going to keep flowing in as non-reference models, which is where most of the supply is going. And remember that right now, most of NVIDIA supply is going towards models that are going to be launched in January as they effectively redo their lineup. That's why NVIDIA's stock has never gone up to the levels that we expected it to in November. I honestly don't expect NVIDIA to really start meeting the shipment numbers we should be expecting from them in any other launch. I mean, I don't know, probably until quarter two. I mean, the fact is they've held back some stock. They're redoing their lineup. They're bringing out a 3080 Ti and their 3070 Ti, most likely. And then also, of course, a 3060 Ti and a 3060 next year. Next year, then, is probably when they will start to be able to supply enough cards to meet demand. And actually, that's going to be right, though, when Navi 22 launches. And as I've covered in previous videos, I actually think Navi 22 could make NVIDIA's GA104 and GA106 cards look more silly than they already have NVIDIA's GO102 cards. That is, unless NVIDIA is willing to price their cards aggressively enough down the rest of the product stack, which Gamers Nexus has covered they might. But let's be clear, that's what it's going to take. Navi 22 coming out around quarter one and quarter two next year will be a 2080 super massacre. It will destroy anything besides something around 2080 super performance for under 350, I believe, from NVIDIA. And probably have more VRAM unless NVIDIA is willing to give the 3060 more RAM than the 3080. There are hard decisions that will now need to be made at NVIDIA. Can they price these cards around 300 to 350? They'll have to give up those gigantic margins Jensen Wang's become addicted to, or are they just going to allow themselves to lose this generation overall and hope their mind share is just about enough for them to not lose too much market share? We're going to have to find out, but... When I look at a 3060 maybe becoming around $300, I'm forced to say we're not back to where we were when I first got into, well, when I first heavily got into PC gaming over a decade ago. But $300, 3060, we're starting to get back there. And it's because AMD didn't just compete in the mid range, but they actually went for the crown. If you want to bring prices down, you have to start at the top. And I'm very very happy AMD is starting to do that. Anyways, I will be covering all of these launches over the next few months, no matter where I am, whether in Peoria or right now in Nashville. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell button so you don't miss any of the podcasts and videos that come out from me. And of course, if you have the extra money, but only if you do, consider supporting me on Patreon. You'll get access to exclusive ad-free podcasts every week, like one near the end of this week where we'll further discuss our thoughts on RDNA 2. All right, thank you for watching.